Hello everyone. Welcome back to Smith's Garage. In this episode, we're gonna be continuing the work on my Volkswagen Beetle and just going down my to-do list of things to get this car back up and running for spring. So the biggest issue, uh, you might wanna check out my last video where I did part some things, but this video is just a continuation of that. I'm still having a charging issue and it's not just really a charging issue anymore because I actually fixed my charging issue. But when I fixed the charging issue, I somehow made it that when I turn my key off, yes, it disconnects my battery, but the power coming off my alternator is still staying in circuit with my coil. So it's just staying running even though my key's off. And the only way to stop that is by dis manually disconnecting my alternator, which isn't very good. Um, I've been avoiding explaining the exact problem I've been having because I can't lie, I didn't feel like having a bunch of people tell me I'm just a dumbass for not figuring it out. But this time I'm gonna lay it all out and explain exactly what happened. I saw in a diagram that somebody had their idiot light, the one that tells you your alternator isn't charging. I saw they had a wire going from their alternator to the light, then from the light to their running position on their ignition. So I tried that. And sure enough, when I did that, it made it so my alternator was reading the correct voltage for a charging alternator, and it was charging my battery. But now, my alternator light on my Speedo stays on. And I have a feeling that's because power is running back through from the ignition through the cable to the alternator, which is turning the light on. But that's not the way it's supposed to go. But the second I disconnect that cable, my alternator doesn't charge my battery anymore. And I've tried just grounding the cable, um, but I can't seem to have either a charging alternator or a car that can turn off when I turn the key off. Um, and I'm truly telling you, I've the reason why my posting schedule has been so irregular is because I've spent weeks with my dad trying to figure this out and I'm starting to think I might break down and take this over to a Volkswagen specialist, which is the first time I've had to do that. But anyways, I'll stop boring you with talking. Um, I cut some pieces of metal at work um, for my transmission mid mount and I cut a couple different sizes. I'm gonna see which one works and then I'm gonna weld them together and put it in my car. And hopefully that'll fix my uh, issue of my engine drooping down too much every time I punch the gas. Oh. I swear to God, this is the cleanest underside of a car. And without fail, we get something in my eye laying underneath it. So here's my main brace that connects to the transmission. And then here is the part that goes against the horns. And here is a strip of metal that's like one eighth thick that I cut. This one's perfectly against it. So I have, I have one where the horns would be perfectly against it and one where they'd be a little close. But I was also thinking about uh, shaving the insides of these red bushings just by a tiny bit so then when it's here they uh, hug the horns a little more instead of just having one specified point of contact in the middle. Um, I don't think that would really do anything but what it would also do is mean if I put that shorter strip of metal in here then they would um, it would raise this bar up closer. Well I'm, I'm gonna tack weld I'll tack weld one of those pieces in place and then I'll um, try putting it on here and see what happens. I just put a bevel along the top of this piece. I realized that I did a little too sharp on one side. But anyways, I put a bevel on it because I'm also gonna put a bevel on this one. And that means that my weld will get better penetration. Um, because then you'll have a field point and then another point meeting. You get good fill on either side as it goes down. Um, I am not a professional welder, so don't take my word for what I'm saying. It's just from experience that usually gives me some stronger welds. So, yeah, now I'm gonna bevel this guy too. Okay, so now this guy's all beveled up as well. Uh, 
I'm just gonna grind the coating off a little on this one too. I just wanna make sure I have good contact points. Okay, so not that it matters that much, just marking out the center. So I have it tacked on both sides. So now I'm gonna take it over to the car, see how she fits. Okay, so now we're just gonna see if it fits. Okay, so I can see the feel the bottom two holes. If the bottom two fit, the top two must be really close. Nope. Okay, that's the left two now. Plus. Well, I think I'm going to commit to welding it fully and then just go from there. Because even if it doesn't work, I can shave out those. I was planning on shaving them out just a hair anyway. So if I do that, give me a little bit of wiggle room and I can get it up in it. Okay, let's try that. Well, before I do this, I would like to state that I am not, I don't weld for a living. Um, I may work in a metal shop, but I work in sheet metal. I don't do welding. It must have moved. Yeah, probably grind those red things down. I don't know. It's so close. And it's kind of hard when you're laying under a car to yeah. keep your hands above you. <laughs> like, you nope, your side's out now. <laughs> no, it's on. I can see it's on. I don't know in what world you're saying it's on. I can see it's half in the hole. Well, maybe Where's if I maybe, maybe if it's on my lap. Maybe if I put one. Wait, wait, wait before you hit it. Before you hit it. Okay. All right. Awesome. All right. So. We got the transmission brace in. Now we're just gonna take it out and test it out, see how it does. Well, I'd say that was a great success. It didn't fully take away my issue of the engine dropping down, but it's definitely supporting the engine more and I can get the power to the ground way better. So with that transmission brace in and working well, I'd say we could cross off our list. Now, uh, there's one thing I crossed off this list and I didn't realize my camera had died while I did it, but I had fixed my carburetor clearance issue that I was having with the deck lid on the car. I'll quickly tell you what that was since I didn't record it. 
So up in here, you can see this uh, pretty big gouge on the inside of my deck lid. And that was from this carburetor wiggling with the engine and rubbing against my hood. Um, I didn't notice it was a problem at first because I just knew that when I closed the lid, I didn't have any clearance problems, but it turns out I did. So my way of solving this was I realized I could shave these air cleaners down just a tiny bit. So I coped them out on a bit of an angle like that. So they're still the same size in the back, but now they're a little lower in the front, about an eighth of an inch. Then I also smoothed out the side of the cap a little bit, not only because it looked really ugly, but also because it gave me more clearance as well. So with those both, I've lost about a little over an eighth, maybe like three sixteenths of an inch in there. And that has helped it not hit the hood. I had the problem on both sides, less so on the other side, but this side was the worst. Um, and with the transmission brace, it should have hopefully fixed that problem fully. So that's why I crossed off my carburetor clearance problem. Um, I'm gonna take a break for today and come back tomorrow and revisit this charging issue. <sighs> Sorry about the loud fan sounds. I don't know how much you can hear them or not, but I have the fans running in here because of how much I've been running this car. Um, this is the next day and for some reason I've returned and I had an epiphany, okay? Not an epiphany, but I just decided to try some things and they seem to be working. So I'll show you what I figured out. Well, I'll tell you before I start the car. So uh, this is my tester. Uh, when I put this clip on one end of a circuit and this on the other, it, this lights up and tells me if something's a circuit. Um, I learned that I should be able to put one end on my coil and the other end on my alternator. And when I start the car, it should be lit up. But then once the alternator starts charging, the light should go out. And I did that this morning and it worked. And when I was doing that and I put the multimeter on, it read my alternator was charging. And when I turned my key off, the car actually turned off and didn't keep running. So. I'm gonna try it again and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so um, when I have the coil connected to the alternator, the light's on when the key is in what position is the key? When the key is in the off position because the alternator has a live going to it. But when I turn the key on and start the car, the light goes out. And when that circuit is happening, my multimeter reads that the alternator is putting out 14.4 volts, which means that it's charging. But even though it's doing that, my alternator light does not work properly. Um, it stays off when I first turn the car on and then it turns on when I, the alternator starts charging, which is the opposite is what it should be. So after all that, for some weird ass reason, my charging issue has magically fixed itself. Um, I have a really hard time believing that it just magically fixed itself because I didn't change anything from the last time I looked at the car to now. But now my alternator reads it's charging the battery. The car can turn itself off. The only thing is the alternator light isn't turning on. So I'm gonna cross it out for now, but I'm gonna add I'm gonna add alternator light on as another problem because it seems to work in an exact opposite of how it should. I turn the key on, start the car, light is off. Rev up the engine a little bit, light comes on. From what I've read, it should do the exact opposite. It should come on right away, and then once the alternator starts charging the battery, it should go away. I have no idea why mine's the opposite, but it is. Well, I'd say that's a pretty good uh, amount of things I got done. So I'm gonna end the video here. 
uh, thank you all so much for watching. If there's other things on this car that you want to see, let me know. I'm kind of running out of video ideas. I'm going to make one about the interior. Otherwise, ask me any questions. I'll combine them and see if I can make a video out of it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.